What is up my friends, you are very welcome along to our Ipswich preview, the first game of the brand new season, one where we should be going into it filled full of hope and expectation, but at this particular moment in time, I can't speak for everybody, but I'm certainly feeling frustration. This game is going to be a welcome break from the lack of transfers, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing Arne Slot's boys take the field for the first time in a new season. It's going to be difficult going to Portman Road. Obviously, Ipswich absolutely flew up last season. Back-to-back -back promotions for them. Kira McKenna doing a wonderful job. TNT have rewarded us with a half-past 12 kickoff, and the PGMOL have re rewarded us with putting Mr. Stuart Atwell on VAR duties. You might remember Stuart Atwell from such episodes as Doku kicks McAllister in the chest, and Atwell does nothing. This video is sponsored by Surfshark, the best VPN on the market. Surfshark is an app or browser extension that allows you to change your location to access websites in other countries and keep you safe and secure from hackers. Using Surfshark, we here in Ireland can access other countries' Netflix libraries or other streaming platforms like The Zone in Spain for all those important Premier League games. Surfshark keeps you safe and private by protecting everything you do online. Everything. When your device connects to the internet, all that information is, in a way, blurred out. Surfshark is particularly useful for keeping you safe from being hacked if you use public Wi-Fi. Let's say you're in a cafe, you're a college, you're out and about, they've got you covered. Surfshark allows you to use one subscription on unlimited devices, meaning you can share your account with friends or family or that neighbor who's a little bit cheap. On top of all of this, Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can also upgrade to Surfshark 1, which includes the VPN, an alert system for breaches related to your data, such as emails and credit cards, and an antivirus software for your desktop. Our sign-up offer gives you Surfshark VPN for a little over €2 Euro a month. Simply scan the QR code on screen right now or use the link in the description and enter the code Anfield Agenda at checkout. So that is what we have to look forward to, but hopefully we can at least go and get the result. And that I do have belief in. I do have belief in the boys and the manager. And it's going to be great to just switch off from transfers and focus on the game. So if you want to join us for the watch along, we're gonna be live on Saturday from half past 11 in the morning, taking you right through the game, match reaction, player ratings, all the usual stuff. Today, what we're gonna do, what we usually do, is have a look through my predicted 11 score prediction, asking you guys to let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Do you agree, do you disagree, who you'd like to see instead, and what we can expect against Ipswich. I think it's gonna be a tricky afternoon. It's never easy to play a newly promoted side away from home, but there is a reason why they are just coming up and that we are, well, into the Champions League. And hopefully that reason is that we're a better footballing team who get the result, but you've got to earn it. Ipswich aren't gonna roll over. It's great to have them back in the Premier League, by the way, I do say that sincerely, nothing but respect for them as a club. Uh, but let's see if we can roll them over and get a result. So, what can we expect going into it? Well, we know that we're not going to have some people involved in it, like players we've sold, like Fabio Carvalho. We also know that we're probably not going to have a full quantity of players available because some of them just aren't up to speed yet after a small pre-season. So I've had a bash at putting together an 11 that I think we're likely to see and, of course, a score prediction that I hope we're likely to see. So let's start off with the score prediction. What have I gone for here? I've gone for an away victory by three goals to one. As always, I have this habit of giving the home team a goal when we're playing away from home in my predictions, but I'd rather that be 3-0, 2-0, 4-1. Be lovely if we could go out there and make a statement. And we've played some really good football in pre-season, but it is the Premier League, as I've said, and Ipswich are going to be no mug. So let's go there and set the tone early doors be at them open their faces hopefully we can play through the lines like we did in pre-season make the right decisions in the final third and leave there with three points and get back to looking at what's next so i'm excited by it who do i think is going to start the game well let's go through it and see what you think and see if you agree with me i know i've said it before but i want to say it again it's so lovely to be back here doing previews talking about actual games rather than the disappointment of the summer window so, who's going to be in goal? Well, no real changes there, but we'll look at the goalkeeper and the centre-backs first. 
So obviously it'll be Alisson and Becker in goal. I don't think any of us have any uh, disagreements on that one. I think we'll see Kwanzaa and Van Dijk personally. Kanade obviously had a bit of a return from the Euros where he didn't really play too well. Had a dodgy end to last season. But looked quite good in the game against Las Palmas. It does seem as though they were likely to see Jarrell Kwanzaa come in alongside our captain Virgil van Dijk. So unless uh, something drastic happens, that's what I think will happen there. Full back positions though, this is what I'm going with. I'm going to go for Trent on the right and Costas on the left. Because that's what we've seen mostly in pre-season. I'd have nothing against Robbo or Gomez on the left-hand side. I just think we're more likely to see Costas because he's had a lot longer to work with Arna Slot than those other boys in pre-season. So my guess of the back five is Alisson in goal, Costas at left-back, Trent at right-back, and Virgil van Dijk and Jarrell Kwanzaa in the centre-back positions. Into the midfield now, and I think you're probably not going to be too surprised at what I've gone for here. Ryan Gravenberg, I believe, will come in and play in the number six role. Maybe we're surprised that Matoro Endo gets the nod, but he has been told pretty clearly that he's not uh, somebody who Arnest Law thinks can do a job really in this system. And until we bring in a number six, I think we're likely to see Ryan Gravenberg given the opportunity in that role. Maybe a 4 2 3 1, so we probably see McAllister back there alongside him and Dominic Soboslai either on the right side of that midfield trio or as a floating number 10. So that's my midfield. Ryan Gravenberg, Dominic Soboslai and Alexis McAllister. And look, that's not a bad midfield. I don't have too many complaints about that. And I think that's probably a midfield that's strong enough to go out there and win the game. I'm looking forward to seeing Gravenberg. I think he didn't really get too many opportunities last season. So under Arnest Law, a fellow Dutchman, I expect him to push on this season. So now we've gone through the defence and the midfield, what are we thinking up top? Any real surprises here? I think you probably get an indication from the team we put out against Sevilla of what we might see. So this is what I've gone for in the wide areas. On the right-hand side, of course, it'll be the great man, Mohamed Salah. He's looked fit, ready to go. Shaved head mo hits a little bit different as well. So hopefully he can get us off to a flyer and put a, a good performance. On the other side... I know he's been spoken about moving quite a bit. I know his name has been linked to Barcelona again, but I've been impressed with what I've seen with Lucho in the Copa America and in pre-season. Scored a brace as well against Sevilla. So my guess is we see Luis Diaz on the left and Mohamed Salah on the right. But who goes through the centre? Darwin Jada. Darwin Jada. Hmm. Who do we go with? We've gone for Diogo Jada because I think that's the sensible option. Darwin has had very limited time to work with Arnest Law and very limited minutes in pre-season. The team that we put out against Las Palmas looked all over the place. So I think the safe option here, while he's fit and available, is to start a campaign with Diogo Jota through the middle and then ease Darwin in over the course of the next few weeks. Jota knows where the goal is. He's an intelligent footballer. And the biggest issue we've had with Diogo at times has been those few niggly injuries that he had. So for me... That's the 11 that I see. Alison Becker in goal. Trent at right back. Costas at left back. Virgil van Dijk and Jarrell Kwanzaa in the centre back positions. Ryan Gravenberg. Dominic Sobosly. And Alexis McAllister in midfield. With Mohamed Salah. Diogo Jota. And Lucho Diaz up top. On top of that as you can see I've gone for a 3-1 victory to the Reds as well. So that's my prediction. Now it is over to you guys. Don't forget to let us know your thoughts on the game. Your own preferred start in 11. Particularly interested to know your thoughts on the whole Jota versus Darwin debate for the start of the campaign. Over the course of the season, I do fully expect that Darwin Nunes will establish himself as our first choice number nine. But, fair to say, he has some convincing to do and some critics to answer. So, I think he's going to start on the bench for the first game. Maybe you think differently. Feel free to let us know in the comments section. Again, a reminder that we will be live from half past 11 on Saturday for the game, all the way through, match reaction, player ratings, I'm excited, I wish it wasn't a half 12 kickoff, but you can have everything in life, now it's over to you folks, thank you for watching, appreciate your support as always, and we will catch up on Saturday, talk to you then, bye bye.